Hey guys, this is The Mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today as I take a deeper look into the most recent episode of Love and Marriage DC. I'm not going to be doing a full episode recap as there are plenty of other content creators who do a great job of this. Instead, I'm going to be focusing on specific segments of the episode that I believe could be used as teachable moments for myself and the audience. So I think this is the season finale. I wonder why they only put uh, 10 episodes in this first season. But before I begin, um, I am now doing daily tower readings and daily astrology readings on the website, on the community forum. So the link to those readings are going to be posted onto the community board on YouTube every single day. But I will be posting uh, daily readings for tarot on the community forum and I'll be posting weekly astrology readings on the forum as well. Okay, so I'm not gonna do like a, a, a play by play of everything that's happened in the episode. I'm just gonna focus on the cast members and the couples and you know, some of the dynamics of their situation. So basically, Irena and Jamie, I like their relationship. I think Jamie is a hard ass and I think Jamie is a is you know a jerk sometimes but I don't think that Jamie is like malicious. I don't think he has negative intentions towards his wife. I think that he's just coping with whatever trauma he's had to endure as a black man in America growing up in the 70s and 80s when shit was really popping in the streets okay as far as crime and drugs and everything negative you could think of a lot of these black men have had to survive in these circumstances so i don't dislike jamie i actually like their relationship and i actually don't have an issue with irena even though i felt like she was you know uh basically attacking uh winter only because ashley didn't like her I think she's a bit of a follower sometimes. Her personality is not as uh, independent or strong, in my opinion. Um, but that's not for everybody. I think that she has a very healing energy. Somebody told me that Irena is a Virgo. Um, and that makes sense because a lot of Virgos have the ability to absorb negative energy from people and do so effortlessly. And people would never know what they're going through because they don't look like what they've experienced. And I think that's the case with Irena and Jamie. I think that even if Jamie has inflicted abuse upon her, um, Irena's energy has absorbed it and transmuted it into something positive for the family. It sounds weird to say, but I can look at her relationship with her children. Um, even with Jamie Jr. and their disabled son and even their daughter, they have very strong relationships with their children. Um, and their children are, um, I don't want to say they're perfect, but their children are independent, their children are loving, their children are supportive of each other, their children can talk to them about certain things, um, they have a comfortable, open relationship with their kids. So if Jamie was as abusive as people are trying to make him to be, I don't think that his relationship with his children would be as, as pleasant. Now I'm not saying he's perfect, but I have seen far worse. I don't think Jamie is malicious. I just think that he's broken and he's trying to do the best that he can in the situation that he's in. Um, considering that he's been through so much trauma and Irena has been through trauma also. So she copes with it by, you know, allowing somebody to verbally and emotionally abuse her. But again, they both said that they would marry each other again. I think that their trauma marries each other, right? So you know, once the sexual compatibility or once the sexual attraction dissipates over time, what do you really have in common with your partner? I think that Irena and Jam Jamie have similar wounds when it comes to uh, their childhood. And so because their trauma mirrors each other, they have an ability to get through some of the more negative cycles of everyday normal relationships. Every long-term relationship ebbs and flows, right? There are times when you're attracted to your partner. There are times when you're not. There are times when you feel like roommates. There are times when, you know, um, you are you feel more romantic towards each other. It's how you navigate through those periods of lack, right? Of lack of access to sex or lack of satisfaction. 
that will determine the longevity of your relationship because it's inevitable. Everybody's not going to be able to satisfy you all of the time. And that is what Martel did not understand. Martel expected his wife to satisfy him 100% of the time. And so if he didn't get sex for a week, right, out of a 10 year relationship, if he didn't get sex for a whole week, he was ready to get a whole girlfriend, right? He couldn't even sacrifice his needs for a week, right? Outside of pregnancies. I'm sure he waited around eight weeks after Melody gave birth to have sex with her. But um, in the time periods when she was able to give him sex, as they say, um, if she were to say no, he just could not fathom why. And so he started his own relationship outside of his marriage in order to get his needs met because he's very immature. So I like the fact that Irena and, you know, Jamie, they would choose each other all over again. Again, she may like his abusive language. She, his love language may be what she likes and vice versa. So, um, yeah, I don't see him as a malicious, evil guy. I see him as somebody who's worked really hard to stay the straight and narrow in spite of all the obstacles that were in his life. And sometimes men become extra hard and extra abrasive and extra abusive when they're trying to cope with feeling like they're losing control or if they're depressed or angry or sad, like they usually uh, become um, abusive to the people around them in order to cope with that. I think that Jamie does not intend to be that way. I think he wants to do better and be better. Um, and I don't think that his his abuse is so bad that um, it is making Arena's life miserable. I think they have their periods when there's like, you know, they blow up and things like that. But it seems like they want to do better. And I think that they will because there's a desire on both their parts to do so. The next couple I'm going to talk about is Ashley and DJ Quick. Um, you know, I, I knew there was something going on with Ashley and DJ Quick's relationship because when Winter brought up um, issues of infidelity between them, Ashley got very defensive. Um, and she started to basically say that uh, Winter was a failure at marriage. But uh, some people would consider Ashley to be a failure at marriage if your man is cheating on you to the point where you got to get get backs on him or you got to, you know, play tit for tat games with him. I don't think that DJ Quick Silva does not love uh, uh, Ashley. I think they love each other both very much. But Ashley resents the fact that she had to basically raise DJ Quick. A lot of first wives have to raise their husbands so that their husbands can be better wives to their second wives. A lot of first wives go through a lot of disrespect and abuse trying to raise a grown man and teach him how to be a domesticated human being um, who takes other people's feelings and their lives into consideration. A lot of wives, first wives get battered. I can see battering as far as like emotional and psychological battering on the part of Irena and Ashley in this situation. They've had to train their husbands on how to be partners. And a lot of women don't have patience for that, especially women who aren't married. A lot of women who are not married, including myself, have no patience when it comes to having to raise a grown man. I'm not going to get extra gray hairs because you refuse to be mature enough to be responsible for your own actions and to take other people's feelings into consideration. But some women are good at that. And you know, that's why Ashley is still married. And that is why uh, Irena is still married. Um, they are okay with having the patience to teach their man how to treat them with respect. I don't think that DJ Quicksilver doesn't love his wife. I do think that there's a lot of love between them. It's just that, you know, when you marry somebody young, a lot of times these men they grow to appear where they're like, fuck it. I'm going to, you know, sow my wild oats in these streets and have a wife at home. And a lot of wives, they don't want to put up with that. But some of them do. So it is what it is between them. And Raina said that she would not, not Raina, sorry. Ashley said she would not do it again. She would not get married to DJ Quicksilver in the same way she did before. Um, this is during their conversation um, on the last day of their trip, on the last day of their retreat. Uh, she was dressed up as Tina Turner and Quicksilver was dressed up as Ike Turner. And they were asked if they would do it all over again. A lot of women would not, a lot of wives would not do it all over again. Like I remember uh, the first season of Love and Marriage Huntsville and Melody was asked by Martel, would you do it all over again? Would you marry me again? And Melody said, no, if I had known that I was going to go through this, I would have, no, I don't think I would have married you again. I don't want to go through this bullshit. I'm not trying to be 
chasing after you, trying to raise you up. That's exhausting for me because nobody has to raise me. I'm supposed to automatically be a good wife while you are allowed to be a dog and run, and run around these streets and make mistakes. And that's what Ashley was saying. She was like, nobody told me how to be a good wife, but I was expected to come as a good wife, ready to deal with whatever my husband was going to inflict on me. But he got the opportunity to sow as well oats, even though she said she got some get back, but he had the opportunity to learn and grow into in this relationship. And I had to come already made. A lot of men expect their wives to be already made and whole, right? To the point where these wives have the capacity to be patient with them enough to help them to grow into men. Meanwhile, women aren't given that kind of grace by and large, right? So when Melody needed time to herself as a young woman, Martel resented that. He wanted her to be his mommy, his wife, his business partner, the mother of his children, etc., etc. And whenever she wanted time for herself, he got jealous. A lot of men get jealous when women have interests outside of them too. That's another conversation. But I'll discuss why I believe that these men are different from Martel and the men of Love and Marriage Huntsville. So yeah, Ashley and Silver, they have a, I think they have an, a good relationship. You know, if they like it, I love it. That's my motto. If they like it, I love it. I'm not going to complain about something that I'm not in. Um, so <laughs> Ashley, in my opinion, got defensive when it comes to winter because there was some truth in what she was saying about DJ Funside ha having his fun in these streets. And meanwhile, um, Ashley is trying to judge Winter for making a mistake in her relationship when it comes to uh, marrying uh, Nickel Slick Ray uh, Kevin. Okay, now Monique and um, Chris. Oh my God. Oh, Megan. So Monique was dressed up, I think, as Little Kim, and Chris was Biggie. He was hilarious. He did a great impression of Biggie Smalls. Um, Chris is such an adorable guy. He's not my type. So that's not what I'm saying. But he's like a gentle, sweet guy. Like Monique is really lucky to have someone like him who is patient, who's understanding, who's been a provider and a protector for her. But she's extremely insecure. And I've said this already, right? I said this after the first review that I did of Love and Marriage DC. I said that Monique was projecting her insecurities on to Chris and this whole Erica Badu spirituality veganism thing is performative in order to, for her to discover a sense of identity that's not rooted in material things. I think that's what she married Chris for. So during their conversation on the last day of this trip, Chris mentioned at his ex-girlfriend, he was like, besides my ex-girlfriend, there's no one else who I've loved more than I've loved Monique, right? And so she got like triggered, like don't mention nobody else but me. It's almost like she wants to act like there was no one before her. And there's no, there's going to be no one after her. Like Chris's life began when she stepped onto the scene. That is so immature for her to get that upset about him mentioning an ex. But they've been married for over 10 years and he's been putting up with your shit the whole time. Right? There aren't any rumors of Chris cheating in spite of Monique's nagging, her incessant nagging and nitpicking him. He's very loyal and patient with her. Right? And so even with him mentioning an ex, oh, don't mention nobody else. That's just respectful. That's, I feel like I have to prove myself. That has nothing to do with Chris because Chris can give you the entire world, right? Money, uh, comfort, respect, loyalty, and patience. And you're still miserable. <laughs> you're still trying to find something outside of yourself to feel validated. That has nothing to do with him. That has nothing to do with Chris. There's nothing Chris can say or do to make Monique feel comfortable or better about herself. He's given her literally everything or at least everything in his power. Like he's given you the freedom to explore yourself outside of this marriage, outside of being a mother, right? You have financial security, right? And he's not abusing you, okay? So sometimes women end up in relationships with men who are using their money to manipulate them. I'm not sure if that's the dynamic that Chris and Monique have had, but um, I don't see Chris as someone who's a financial abuser. I see Chris as someone who's proud of his wife and who wants his wife to succeed. So you have a man who's supportive of you emotionally, financially, physically, all this stuff, and you're still miserable and easily triggered. It's like Chris has to walk around on eggshells around Monique and it's really irritating to witness. It's really irritating to see him constantly apologizing for accidentally hurting her feelings 
that are easily hurt, right? And this has nothing to do with him. Like I said, she kept mentioning the fact that she felt like she had to keep proving herself to people. If Monique grew up very poor and abandoned and neglected, it would make sense that uh, receiving all of this abundance and goodwill and good luck will make her feel even more insecure. Like, do I deserve to be here? Do I deserve all of this? So she's maybe trying to nitpick at it to prove to herself that she deserves it or she may be nitpicking at it. It's almost like um, if it's if I pick at it, then it may not it must not be real. Or I'm going to try to sabotage my relationship in my life because I feel like I don't deserve it. Something like that is going on with Monique. And you know, Mon uh, Chris said that Monique is demanding, controlling, and you know, nagging in a sense. But he would have it no other way. He loves the ground that this lady walks on. But she got triggered by some ex situation. Martel cheated on Melody for five years because she wouldn't suck his penis. Or she wouldn't submit to him, right? She would not submit to him. That is a very loaded word that can be many things. Yet, Monique's husband is being verbally abused and mentally abused by Monique. We can all see that he's being, this is, this is low-key abuse. And he's still loyal to her. He's faithful to her in spite of all of her shortcomings, all of her issues. He's like, I would marry her all over again. But Martel says she wasn't sucking my penis for a week, so that justified me cheating for a whole five years. Meanwhile, Melody's the one carrying their businesses on their back, and she's the primary uh, breadwinner, and she's the dominant parent in their relationship. And Martel still resents her enough to the point where he feels like if she doesn't give him complete obedience and submission, then he doesn't feel fulfilled. The reason why, and I said this last week, the reason why is because Martel did not build his success by his own hand. The difference between Martel and, you know, and Marceau and I believe Maurice versus the men on Love and Marriage DC, the, love, the men on Love and Marriage DC, they became successful by their own hard work, energy, and effort. They're successful in their own right. So they may have the confidence in themselves to not need their wives to submit to them because they're affirmed and validated by their work. They're affirmed and validated by their success that they've actually built by their own hand, by their own hard work. And so the question I was asking last week was if Martel had done everything that he said he was doing, if he was the primary breadwinner and he was the dominant parent in a situation, he was the reason why they were so successful. Why was he still so miserable? It is because he did not use his energy to do that. That was Melody. He was taking credit for Melody's hard work, her energy, her effort, her dedication, her discipline, right? And so because he was taking credit for it, even though he got the accolades and acknowledgement because he's her husband, he was her ex-husband, he still felt hollow because he was not able to manifest the reality that he wanted. He was not able to manifest the life that he wanted based on his own labor, right? So the men on this show, they're not as insecure about certain things. They're not as easily triggered or put off by a wife saying, uh, I'm tired today, I'm bored today, whatever, whatever. And these people have been married for a long time. Not to say they wasn't cheating. There was some cheating going on, but it wasn't cheating to the point of you're trying to blatantly disrespect your wife because you want to break her down so that she can submit to you so you can feel validated. It's not the same thing with these men. That's why I like these men more than I like the men on Love and Marriage Huntsville because these men are successful by their own right. And you can see by the way they walk and they talk. They have a confidence about themselves and a pride about themselves based on the fact that the success that they enjoy, right? The, the luxuries that they've been able to afford their children and themselves and their wives, they actually built it with their own hands. They earned it themselves. Nobody gave that to them. And that's a different kind of accomplishment that you get when you know you busted your ass to get everything that you have. Nobody gave you anything. You weren't able to piggyback off of your wife to become successful. And so now you don't need your wife to submit to you in that way because you, your work is submitting to you. Your work is your child. You are able to, you know, manifest your reality you wanted to manifest because of your ability and your discipline um, when it comes to executing your vision right? These men all had a vision for their lives. And some of them were able to 
accomplish this and some are not. Martel was able to accomplish his success off of Melody's back. That's the difference. And that is why these men, especially Chris, Chris was, you know, in the NFL, he was a superstar athlete, right? He was able to reach a goal that Martel could not reach. And as a result, he earned millions of dollars. And those millions of dollars gave his wife luxury and peace and a home and, you know, um, the ability to pursue her dreams. She didn't have to work her ass off like other women do, like Melody did. And in my opinion, this is the reason why Chris has more patience when it comes to um, his wife, Monique, because he doesn't feel validated by his wife. He wants his wife to be happy. He wants his wife to be secure within herself. She's very, very insecure. But his accomplishments thus far have guarded him a certain level of respect in society that she can't take away from him, right? Just like with, you know, DJ Quicksilver and uh, Jamie, their success in society, it supersedes whatever bullshit, you know, their wives may put them through. I don't think they put them through anything, but it's a whole different kind of feeling when you are your own man, especially as an entrepreneur. Not only are you successful, but you're successful as an entrepreneur. You're your own boss, right? So I don't think Martel was able to really enjoy his success the way that he wanted to because Melody was doing all the work, which is why he was like, yeah, she wasn't acknowledging me. Yeah, she was acknowledging you because she wasn't doing shit by and large, right? If you were doing certain things and you were a man in a, in a male dominated industry, they would have wanted to acknowledge Martel's contributions to their business. But he wasn't doing much in my opinion. I think Melody was doing most of the hard work. So guess what? They had to honor the person doing most of the hard work. We saw what happened when Martel had his own line launch. He couldn't even make a speech for his own company, his own brand, right? So it is what it is. Uh, the men on Love and Marriage DC, they don't have the same insecurities, right? And so for all the pick me women who were saying, well, if Melody was doing what she was supposed to do, if she was sucking her man's dick the way she was supposed to suck it, he wouldn't have cheated. But look how Monique cre treats Chris and he worships the ground she walks on. Men cheat because they want to, not because a woman is making them do anything. Okay. Monique is a nag. She's a nag and she is a wet blanket and she makes Chris walk around on eggshells to protect her very delicate, sensitive feelings that have nothing to do with him. He didn't do nothing to her. He didn't damage her, right? She was damaged before she got into that relationship and he's been very, very patient with her. He's given her a life that most women would want and she's still miserable and I don't think Chris is cheating. A lot of men would say, yeah, it's okay for you to cheat because this lady's a nag, right? Um, and so, but Chris doesn't want to cheat because he loves and respects his wife. He's not perfect. I don't think he's perfect. But from what I've seen on the show, she did a damn good job with finding a husband. He's a great husband. But I, I said before, I don't think that uh, he was her first choice. I think that he was an opportunity for her. And so she treats him as such. And I think that she feels like she constantly has to prove herself because in the back of her mind, she knows this. And she's paranoid about being found out um, as far as her being a gold digger. For her to want Chris to act like she was the beginning and the end for him is extremely immature. This is a grown man who was an athlete. Of course, he had plenty of girlfriends in college before you, of course. Is there some guilt involved? Was Monique involved in breaking up his relationship with somebody else? Why would he bring up his ex after all this time? And why would Monique be so triggered by this girl who's obviously irrelevant because you've been married to this man for over 10 years and you got three kids and he's professing his love to you on TV all the time, unlike with Marceau and Tisha, right? There are no rumors of Chris sleeping around with anybody so why are you so easily triggered when he does any little thing you don't like now i'm gonna say this and i don't mean to be messy a couple of days ago i talked about men and their preferences and i said that there are sometimes men they will go back to somebody from their past their ex the one that got away if things don't work out with their wife i've said this already is she concerned about that um is there unfinished business between chris and his ex that is would trigger Monique the way that it has. I mean, it looks like Chris loves Monique more than, you know, she loves him. 
And it is what it is. If he likes it, I love it. I'm happy for him. If he's happy with the relationship that he's in, then who am I to judge or to say anything about it? You know, it's just my opinion. But from the looks of things, uh, Monique seems to be chronically unhappy. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some really uh, tense aspects between the moon, Saturn, and Pluto and her sun and her birth chart. I don't know her birthday uh, by and large. Um, I think she's a Libra. Um, if she was born in the early 80s, and that would make Pluto would be on her sun and Saturn would be there too, which would account for her small physique. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, yeah, so um, by and large, I like this show. I want them to continue the show the way that it is. Do not bring any unnecessary drama to the show. Uh, we don't need another Love and Marriage Hunts for a repeat. The reason why Love and Marriage Huntsville became so toxic was because of how abusive Melly and Martel's relationship was. It was so nasty that there was no way that it was not going to bleed over into the airwaves. It was not going to translate to what we saw on screen. It was too nasty. A five-year affair and a baby and verbal abuse and narcissism and, you know, financial abuse. It's just too nasty. Um, I'm glad that this show is a, is a reprieve from that. I hope the show can grow in popularity because there needs to be more positive examples of relationships, of black relationships, of black successful relationships on television. Everything doesn't have to be about drama and fighting all the time, right? So I do appreciate this show ending on a very positive note for this season. Um, there is going to be a reunion next week, I believe. And, uh, you know, Carl is going, is going to ask questions that is going to reopen a can of worms for the cast. And, you know, it is what it is, man. Um, I hope the show stays positive. And like I said, no matter how bad Monique treats Chris, he ain't going nowhere, right? Because he doesn't want to go nowhere. Martel cheated on Melody because he wanted to cheat. He wanted an excuse to do what he was going to do anyway, which is why he was fucking around on his wife before they even got married. It is the man. It is not the wife. I'm not saying that wives should treat their men like shit. No, if you're not happy, then leave. Chris would be the type, in my opinion, to leave instead of cheat, right? That is what Martel should have done. If you weren't happy with your wife, then guess what? You should leave instead of cheat for five years. If you're still with your wife for five years, you must be happy with something. So if you're happy with something, use that something as an excuse not to cheat. But some people are selfish and they're going to do what they do anyway. The men on this show, I don't feel like they hate their wives. I don't feel like they resent their wives. I feel like they respect their wives to a certain extent because they were able to be successful by and large, without their wives' help, right? Kimmy was more successful than Maurice. Tisha had more going for her than Marceau did in a way. And that's why Mar Marceau kind of kept her stuck in the house, right? To force her to be a stay-at-home mama. And of course, Melody had more going for her than Martel. So these men were married to women who helped them to elevate themselves. But men resent women who have to do this for them. Men resent it when women help them. They resent needing help from women. So they usually cheat with women who put them on a pedestal. That's basically what it is. Um, but at least these men were respectful enough by and large to treat their wives as if they wanted to be married to them. Right? Even if it's performative, I don't know. But these men seem to treat their wives as if they wanted to be married to them. As if they loved them. Right? And Raina even mentioned, like I said before, that, you know... Uh, her husband never showed her anything that would indicate that he was cheating. But of course, you know, you're going to suspect it. But at least he was respectful enough to keep it under wraps, right? It is what it is. And DJ Quicksilver got married really young. And I think that, you know, he tightened his game up. And eventually, uh, he grew to be a more mature man. He didn't get worse as Tom progressed like Martel did. So that's kudos to him too. And the same thing with Chris and Monique. Chris, is, in my opinion, is one of the best husbands on reality TV, period. A wonderful man. He seems to be like a wonderful guy, right? And so I hope Monique can honor and cherish him and deal with her demons and not project them onto him and not hide behind veganism and spirituality and dreads to seem as if she's healed and whole and healthy and Chris is the one with the problem. 
that's just performative bullshit, right? She needs intensive therapy if she's not in therapy already, especially if she's been traumatized, you know? And there's no shame in being traumatized. Like, I don't want to bash her for going through trauma. All of us have been traumatized. So we have to be sensitive to people who have gone through these, you know, very negative experiences that have uh, scarred them to the point where they can't appreciate, they can't appreciate the good things in life. Um, so I do have sympathy for her um, in that regard because sometimes you go through so much shit when God finally gives you favor in a sense. You're like, really? How, where did all this come from? You know, and you don't feel like you deserve it. You feel like you have to earn it or you have like imposter syndrome. So I understand what Monique is going through. But at some point, you got to stop pointing the finger at your husband and take a deeper look at yourself and figure out what you need to do within yourself to be more content with having everything, basically. All right, um, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys for listening. I look forward to reading your comments. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon.